Pro guys, welcome to the video. Uh, we're gonna make a video on how to strip down an MT125. This is a, go down onto the back. This is a 19 plate. So it's the old, it's the newest older model. Um, so yeah, uh, we're gonna strip it down to where you can do the valve clearances. I'm not gonna show you how to do the valve clearances, but I can show you how to strip down the bike to the point where it's easy to, well, it's just to get to it basically. So first off, we're gonna start by removing the seat, which is key, key, in here, twist clockwise and pull back and it should just release. And then now you've got all of this on show, um, the next thing to do is to disconnect the battery of course. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by removing this screw here, obviously lefty loosey, and then uh, this screw here. So obviously keep in mind if you're touching any of these, don't accidentally move the screwdriver and touch the frame at the same time, otherwise you'll go pop. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so start by removing this screw and this screw. So now we're about to start. Obviously the first thing is to take the seat off, and I'm just gonna show you all the tools and things you're gonna need. As far as I'm concerned, this is what you'll need. If there's any other tools that I use, I'll let you know. I'll add it into the video as we go along, but I'm pretty sure this is all we need. So we get a 9mm uh, spanner, a 10mm spanner, and an 8mm spanner. Then we get a small flathead, uh, the smallest one you've got. Just, I think it's for prying things. We did, it, we did the same thing yesterday, so this is what we use for a lot of things. Then get a normal size flathead, and then get a normal size posi head or a Phillips or whatever. Then you want some long nose pliers. This is for good for grabbing things small far further away. And then what you're gonna need next is, let me just check which size this is. So you're gonna need a 4.5 millimeter Allen key. And then you're gonna need a 5.5 millimeter Allen key. This one's for fairings. And this one's for, uh, I think this is for the tank and some other things, taking the actual tank off. And then this is for snipping any zip ties that are in there. Obviously mine have already been snipped or they've been added on, so we'll, I'll show you which ones to snip off. Uh, if there's any on yours that are not on mine, snip them off. Obviously don't snip the wires from the zip tie. It's not a very good idea. Then the next thing is the ratchet set bits. Obviously you want the, the swingy arm one swingy yarn one great uh, I don't know if I use this but it's probably useful for someone if they've got big hands they can't fit that in as well uh, then we've got the long extension piece this is the smallest one I've got smallest uh, obviously size ratchet I've got and then I've got the small me well medium extension piece for the ratchet then we've got a posi head which is a a PH1, I think. PH1. And then we've got obviously the 4mm, uh, 4mm and key piece. Then we've got the screwdriver version, which goes onto the ratchet for it more extension. Then we've got the actual ratchet. Obviously, it's, it's the smallest one I've got. I've got three. This one's the smallest one. So the smallest one you've got, stick that on. Then it's a 10 mil, a 10 mil ratchet piece, as well as a 8 mil ratchet piece. And then obviously get yourself some tubs and then label them out. This one's for fairings. This is uh, bolts for the engine or whatever. And then this is miscellaneous stuff, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, those are the these are the tools you're gonna need uh, so far. And I don't think I used anything else. But yeah. So now we're gonna start with taking the battery out. I'll just grab the screwdriver, which is been put down somewhere. Yeah. So obviously you're going to need the normal size uh, Phillips head. So start off by loosening one of the screws to the point where it'll come out, and then I'll just grab the long nose pliers, the long nose pliers that I showed you at the start of the video. Take these out, grab the screw, and pull it out. That's the screw, don't lose the screw. It's not, not a good idea. Next, we're gonna take the next one out. Of 
course, loosen it to the point where it's ready to come out, get the long nose pliers onto the posi part and pull it directly out. And then put these two screws, you're going to take the battery out anyway, so just pull all of the connectors off, all of this. This is obviously, I've got more than you, I've got a wireless phone charger, heated grips and I've also got the trickle charger which is in the side here. So obviously now you've disconnected all of your aftermarket uh, parts, pull the connectors off so they're not touching and then the battery should just be ready to pull out. It should just pull out just like that. And then here's your battery. I've already drawn an X on it because it's, as you can see, it's gone. So that's what a gone battery looks like. And that's the name of the battery if you need to, that's what the front of it is. It's this number right here if you want to look at what it is. But yeah, so obviously the water levels are supposed to be up here, but they're sort of down here and like that, so it's gone. So now that we've taken the battery off, I've put the screws back in so I don't lose them. Obviously this battery's gone anyway, you can see the water level's off. There's one water level, there's one water level, there's one. All the way across here, it's supposed to be across here, as you can see, upper level, lower level. If you want to know the name of the battery, that's the name of it. Uh, try next time to go for like a gel battery or something, I'm going to try and see if I can get one. But yeah, right. next, thing, next thing to get off is going to be the air scoops. These are pretty easy to get off, all it is is if I show you, it's this Allen key bolt here, which is right at the top of the air scoop. Then you've got one right as it comes down underneath the fairing for the tank. You've got one here. And then the next one is right here. It's that one there. So this is how I take the first Allen key bolt out, which is the one which is under here. What? It's not this one here, by the way, that's attached to the very bottom. It's the one that goes, well, it looks like it goes into the frame. What I do is I get the screwdriver bit onto the medium extended bit, onto the long extended bit with the four mil Allen key part on the end. Then what you want to do is you want to push it into the part, into the screw, into the bolt. And then once it's locked in, just loosen it. It should be not. It shouldn't be very tight. And then once it comes out, it should be ready to pop in a second. Now it's for. Now it's out. And then that's how you take the bottom one out. The rest of them are just obviously Allen key. With that one there, that's right there on your bike. And then you've got one near the front, which is there. And that's the only bolts that are connecting this to the bike. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this screw this screw and obviously the the other three on the other side the only hard one to get is the one underneath so i just showed you how to do that and where the other ones are so take those three out and before you begin to freestyle it and think oh yeah i've taken all the screws out i've just paused the video now i'm just going to rip the air scoop off don't forget the indicator is connected to the air scoop so when you pull it off it's just connected on by rubbers so just lightly pull on it until it separates off the bike and then I'll show you the connector in like a second. So now I've taken all six bolts out. I've stuck them in one of these coffee uh, tops. So those are all safe, they're not gonna get lost. Now, here is the thing with the air scoop. Obviously when you're working on each side, move the bars out of the way. So when you take this off, I've taken all three screws out. Now what it should do is simply just pull forward, give it a little wiggle, and it should then just separate. You shouldn't have these wires on here unless you have heated grips. Uh, you should only have this one with the brown connectors in. So what you want to do, it's going to be hard for me to hold this as well as film, but if you see that little, if I can stick my finger in the way, if you see that little triangle piece there, push it towards the wires and then pull the wires connector out. I'll see if I can try and get a video. So no matter how hard I try, I can't actually pull the pull the uh, thing out while on video. So you've got the connector there, which goes into here. So obviously you can see the triangle piece and then the little ring on the top, which it goes through. You could probably just use your initiative, but don't yank it out because that's how long the wire is. 
uh, otherwise you'll, you're asking for problems. And then here's your air scoop, stick it on there, and then there's your ready to go air scoop. Then we're just gonna do the same on the other side, and uh, you get the gist now. So now what we've got is an MT with no air scoops. Very clean looking, very, more like an MT than an MT. So you've got just the tank on now, the next thing is to take the tank off. So, what you want to start off by doing is taking the tank cover off, which is your key, which should be in here. Take it out, flip up the gear, flip up the flipper, read the thing that says open, twist it that way, and pull it off. Give it a little shake into the thing, and then stick it anywhere. Doesn't matter, just don't lose it. And then what you want to do, the way to take the tank cover off is you take these two bolts off with your big Allen key. I think it's the 5.5 mil millimeter one. No, it's not. Ignore me. That's not the ones you take off. Ignore me. Uh, what you want to do is take this screw out with a posi head screwdriver and this one here. Follow it round. There's no more fairing screws. The next ones are this bolt here. And then this bolt here and then after that you want to take this cap off you should have a cap if you're not and you probably lost it and then use one of the spanner bits to take this off so for the first part of course use your posi head screwdriver which i showed you at the start of the video to loosen this one it should have a, a black washer on it uh, to show you to obviously protect the fairing which sort of doesn't really matter on the other side so take this, stick it in the fairings bolt pack, leave the washer on it, and then obviously if you if you forget which where it goes, just watch this video back and you can see where it goes. And then we go to the other side, ignore the fact the fairing has been crushed. Take this out. Come on. Put a thousand threads on it, Yamaha. Cheers. Yeah, then you've got your next bolt. Stick that in the fairings one as well. And then the next things to get off is to get this bolt off here, the one on the other side, and take this off. So now what you want to get is your smaller sized 4.4 millimeter, 4.5 millimeter Allen key, and just take these bolts out. Then obviously chuck it straight into the fairings pack. All the fairings bolts are pretty much the same size. If it's plastic going into plastic, it has the black extender piece on it. Um, has, has the uh, extension piece on it, which I can't really show you because I'm not doing anything with that. So I think that's just in the air scoop, so it's the black extended screw. So take those out. Then the next thing to do is to, of course, take this out. Then the next thing you're going to want is the small ratchet with the extension piece on and the 10 mil socket. Stick it on. And then the last part should just be finger tight. And then you've got the cap. Don't lose that. I don't know. I don't recommend losing anything, but... So I'm going to chuck, uh, I put them here so I remember where they go. Of course you remember it's bolt then that on top of the fairing. Then I think the last thing to get off is this clip here. I've broken the fucking thing here. So I need to use a small Allen key uh, on this and then remove the washer. I did have the clip, I broke it yesterday. Well I didn't, Chris did. But yeah, <laughs> Chris prick. Okay, so obviously now we're going to take this off, which is extremely loose and stupid me, being an idiot. And then that's what I mean by the extension piece. If it's plastic and it's plastic, put that in there. And then obviously go straight over, and then it's the, obviously you don't have a washer on yours, but I do. So that goes in there, and then the next thing should be take the tank straight off. So the next part is to actually pull the tank cover off. Ignore the plug, of course, get on my Instagram. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're just going to grab it like this and pull, I think it's front to back. 
it should just loosen up and pull straight off. Just manoeuvre it around until you get the tank cover, very sexy tank cover. Take this and put it down somewhere where it doesn't really matter. Of course you've got the tank here now, uh, which is the next thing to take off. Then the next thing to do would be to put the fuel gauge back on, fuel gauge, fuel cap back on. Of course, if you've got a hot log like I have, uh, try not to try not to take too long doing this. What you're going to do is obviously put the tank, put the cover back on. Make sure it's left on open, otherwise you'll be like, "What's going on?" So put it on open and close, and just close the cap. And then, of course, it's sealed. Then you've got nothing to worry about. So now what you've got left is the tank. What you're going to do is you're going to need to take these bolts out, these connections out, which I'll show you how to do, and then this bolt out here, which is a really strange bolt, so don't lose anything on it. I'm pretty sure that's the only thing. And then you've also got an overflow hose. So obviously I'm going to start off by showing you how to take the overflow hose off, if I can. So of course you've got this little springy part here which you can't really see, but you've got this springy part, push the clips together, pull it down the hose, and then you've got that. Pull it off, down, and then where it goes here, pull it straight out, and then just leave it. Ignore it. Or just, if I was you, probably take the clip off, pull the rubber off, put the rubber back on the tank, so then you don't lose it. And then you've just got the rubber hose. And then I'll put this probably in the miscellaneous pile and then of course obviously next things to do is to take these clips out can't quite remember how these come out i think it's uh pull this clip up or something oh so you got a little tab here push the tab down and pull back and that's it these two are different colors you can look at mine for reference on which way they go around so push the tab down squeeze it and pull it off that's how those come off. Pull that out of there, out of the tank, and then leave it to hang. Then the next thing would be to take this white cap off. I'm pretty sure all it does is pulls straight off. And I just think, I think it just pulls straight out. Okay, push. So you see this one here on the opposite side of where the arrow is facing. Push your thumb into it, and then grip it, and pull it out. And then I'm, I'm going to stick this into the miscellaneous tray. And then of course you've got this left, which I think is the fuel gauge. No, it's the fuel, it's the fuel line. Sorry, idiot. Uh, pinch the two sides and pull straight out. Should be, yeah. Pinch each side quite hard. Christ. Okay now. Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna try and figure this out, but that's how you do it. You pinch either side and then pull out uh, pull out. Okay, that wasn't as easy as I thought it'd be. Just obviously these two clips on the either side, push them in and pull it straight out. Now what you're gonna have is you're gonna have excess or excess fuel sat in the line. So what you're gonna wanna do is get like a Ziploc bag or any plastic bag and zip tie it to the end. So if you spill anything, it's not gonna drop onto anything that gets hot or electric or anything. So I'm just gonna do that now. Now I've zip tied the end of this, zip tied a little plastic bag onto the end. Then we can pull it out the tank and let it sag. Any Excess fuel will just go straight into the bag, which will just probably dissolve. Then the next thing to do is to physically disconnect the tank. Obviously now you've disconnected all of these parts and any hose is connected. The only things that are connecting this together now is this, which I think is the 10 mil spanner or nine mil, or maybe, maybe actually, it's a different size. I'm pretty sure 10 mil doesn't fit on that. It might be 13 mil, so adding, Adding a tool to the list, is it 12 mil or is it slightly bigger than 12 mil? It's a 13 mil. I had a feeling I'd need a 13 mil. So, what we got? 13. Okay, so we got 13 mil spanner. Sorry guys, I forgot about that one. 13 mil spanner fits directly on. Lefty do seat to loosen it. 
So I'm pretty sure it's a, the bolt and then the metal washer on top. So we're going to loosen this now. Okay, so we've got the, the bolt, which is a weird, weird thing. Don't lose it because I'm not too sure you can go to your local Tesco and buy one. It doesn't look like you can just do that. Stick that next to the tank holder one. And then, of course, stick your added tool on 13 mouse spanner. Forgot about that one. Then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab your big Allen key and then loosen these. If it's straight on, I'm going to loosen these to be able to take the tank off. So, yeah. So then, of course, I've taken these out. I've taken that out. And then, so the bolts that I've just taken out look like this. This is the washer that obviously goes into the rubber part, which you can feel on yours. Then's the washer, then's the Allen key bit, which I'm going to leave with the fuel, with the fuel tank part. So the next thing would be to take the tank off, which I'm going to show you how to do. Now, next thing to do is to take the fuel tank off. This technically, as long as you've taken the fuel hose off, the two connectors, the fuel, the fuel line, put the fuel tank cap back on, taken this bolt out and taken these two bolts out, that should be all that's connected to it. Pretty sure it is anyway. So we're gonna try it now. If it messes up on mine, it'll mess up on yours. So we'll try and see if it, it should technically just pull straight off. Okay, so yeah, it's pulled straight off. It's quite heavy because I've got half a tank of fuel in there. If you've got a full tank of fuel, it's going to be considerably heavier. So I'm just going to stick this down here. Don't lose it, obviously, because I think bikes need fuel to run. So then you've got all of this left. Here's your airbox. So if you wanted to do your, um, if you wanted to take it apart just to get to your air filter. Here's your air box. Take these four screws out. I don't think I need to do that. I'm pretty sure everything that I need is here. So what we're going to need to do is move this brown hose out of the way. It may be different on yours, but mine's been capped. So I don't know what this one does. I don't know what that, that's for. So we're just going to stick that under the fair in there so we can hide it. So we've got that. Then what we're going to need to do is disconnect some of the wires. So what we're gonna to need to do is take the throttle, take these cables out of the throttle so that you can actually get in there to do anything. And then there's a bunch of wires in here that need taken out, which I'm gonna go into detail on which ones to unplug. And uh, if you just wanna dive straight in from here, don't be shy. All of the connection pieces are different heads. So if they don't push together, they're not the right size. So yeah, if, if you want to just dive straight in, take this thing off, take the spark plug cap, take the cap off the spark plug off, and then this lot should come out. Obviously, remember, orange goes closer to the uh, throttle body and the red goes closer to the, top, <laughs> to the front of your bike. So yeah, I'm going to dive straight in and take a t and, and get to whatever I need to do next. So now we've got to this part, it's going to be hard to film everything in here because pulling apart the connectors involves two hands. So I'm going to try and set up the tripod onto my bars, but obviously I can first start off by pulling these two. Well, actually no, I'm going to start off by doing the throttle. So of course you know you can't spin this nut here. This nut on this side cannot be spun because of this part here. So what you want to do is lefty loosey this one and spin that all the way to the back. You can set it at the end. Once you put it all back together, I'll show you. Um, I'll see if I can make a video on how to put it back together again. So of course, pull that until it pops out. Now, because it's Yamaha, they've decided, right, we're gonna be an idiot and stick the, the prongs at the end, which you may or may not know what it looks like. They go into the actual back of the uh, thing. So you're gonna need to get the wire the cable and you're going to need to pull it all the way around and then push this part here you can't really see it where my finger is there's a little prong on the end you're going to need to pull it out and twist the cable I'm going to push more cable through a bit hard to do with one hand pull it all the way out and then push it 
out. And then you can see it coming out. And then that's what you've got on the end. Of course, it's a, I can't really film it. It's really hard to film. Um, but you've got the hole in the back. And then basically, let's say, for example, this is the hole, the opening where the cable needs to come through underneath, which you can see there, actually, if it wants to focus, is actually on the complete opposite side. So you need to angle the cable in the opposite direction as to the middle of the throttle body. So, yeah. Then what I'm going to do is, of course, take the bottom one out. Don't worry about messing up the tensioner. It's, uh, I'm going to um, I'm see if I can show you when I put it back together. Oh, okay. So when I spin this, it actually loosens the top one as well. So spin that, pull that out, spin this cable round. Pull it round, get it to the point where you can get it out the opposite way. It should be easy once you get your hand in there, if you've got little hands like me. And then both of the throttle cables are out. I'd say it's simple as that, but it's not very fucking simple. It takes quite a while to do it for the first time. Then what you're going to want to do is, obviously you've got your two, they're the hardest cables here. They connect onto these parts here. So follow it around and you've got these two cables. Pull these through and then you'll see the two throttle cables pull all the way through as hard as you can don't fucking break them but yeah I need two hands to do this but just get it to the point where it's sat comfortably over there not in the way though but you can always move it closer or further away um, of course just don't pull it all the way through because I'm not showing you how to run the cable all the way through the bike Okay, so now what we've got is the cable has been pulled through halfway as to where you want it. Uh, what I've done is the black hose that comes for the overflow for the tank needs to be pulled out, which is down here. It's the black cable next to the clear one. The clear one goes into the overflow of the radiator. This one can just dangle here, so can the overflow of the radiator. I want to go to connect that, dis disconnect that. And then unfortunately, all of these cables need to be pissed off out of the way. So there's a zip toy here. I'm not too sure if it's there on when before you've taken it apart, but that's where I put it back when I took it out. Of course, you can see you can see I put it back because otherwise Yamaha would have cut it here. But so what you want to do is you want to get the the zip tie cutters and cut the zip tie. Again, don't cut the wires away from the zip tie. Cut the zip tie, not the wires. Now you've got the wire cutters. Don't cut the wires with the wire cutters. You want to cut the zip tie with the wire cutters. Place it on the zip tie, pop, pull the zip tie out, and then you've got all of these wires here that need to be disconnected. That is horrendous looking, I know. But unfortunately, Yamaha and a lot of other bike manufacturers have decided to bury the valve time and things. So yeah, it's a bit AIDS. Then the next thing I'm gonna do, once this is done, is make it easier for myself and get this thing out of the way. It's for the spark plug. I don't know the technical name, but obviously orange one goes at the bottom one and the red one goes at the top one. So you've got that. Then you want to get the 8mm or 10mm. 8mm or 10mm socket piece and take that off. So now what you're going to want to do is take the ratchet with the 10mm. I'm not going into too much detail because there's only so much storage that I can film this sort of stuff on. Loosen these bolts as much all the way. I fucking did them tight because I didn't think I'd be stripping it down again. And then you get the one piece and just loosen it with your your fingers. Okay, and then just do the rest with your fingers. You'll live. And obviously, of course, make sure when you do this, the battery is disconnected because you're now going to be pissing about with wires. And if you electrocute yourself and die, it's not my fault because I've told you to disconnect the battery. Make sure the battery is completely disconnected. It's not just left in there so that the wires can secretly then go and float around. So now you've got that there. Then you've got your spark plug. What you want to do is lightly push, well, hard push up. Push the cat. Don't twist it. It's not going to twist. You can twist it if you want. You'll be there all day. And pull the cap up. 
spot with cat come on it's a lot harder on the opposite side of the bike especially with one hand i'm doing this one-handed now because i'm a pro professional mechanic Okay, I've just showed you how to do it. You just pull the cap up and then I'll pull it out now. Okay, now I'll pull the cap off. You've got your spark plug exposed. Here's your cap, NGK, sponsored, not sponsored. Uh, and then you've got this. Just simply take this, stick it there, so you don't lose it. Get these two bolts, stick them in the engine one, because why not? That's basically an engine. Then you've got these wires, pull these out of the way. These can sit there and wait. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is take every, every wire that's connected in here apart, pull half on this side and half on this side. Now you'll have this cover here and you'll be wondering, oh, there's connectors under there, I need to get them out of the way. Simply just pull it out of the clip, pull the foreskin back, <laughs> and then disconnect all of these. These may look all the same, but if you look inside, they're slightly different on each one of them. It's kind of obvious which one goes in where. You'll have some that is like six with a row, and then there's two empty slots. You've got just six, and then you've got a bunch of them on like different color, I guess. I don't know. We'll see. And then obviously, it's hard to mix up that one. Then there's a red one somewhere, probably buried in here. It's in... It's in this one here, the red one, disconnect the red one of course. They're all different colours and different 